Balancing work and family is something most women find very challenging. We're here to share the stories of some of those women and to encourage you to begin looking at your own life in a new way. Being a mother was something that I always intended to do this lifetime. It hasn't come at the time in the way that I thought that it was going to happen, um, but I think that it could not have been any better for me. So explain that a little bit. Well, I think that like probably many women, I expected to sort of have a family the traditional way. Uh, finish school, get married, have children, and go on with my life and my career. Uh, but my career was taking off and was doing phenomenally well, uh, which is how I ended up going to the bench, uh, being nominated to become a federal judge at 36 years old. Uh, but I think I spent a lot more time concentrating on my career than I did on my personal life. And so in my early 40s, I looked up one day and said, oops, I forgot to have a baby. And so parenting was something that I always intended to do, and that's when I decided that adoption was the way for me. Did you see yourself as a politician? Did people say to your mother, that little girl, she's just going to... She's just a natural born politician. <laughs> no, they probably said, does she know how to talk? I was painfully shy, very, very shy, very introverted. Uh, no one who knew me then can believe what I do now. Oh, I, th I think women um, are just such strong individuals. Um, you know, I find uh, women inspiring every day in terms of what they have to deal with um, and manage um, in their daily lives. And uh, I think it's important that we can all get so lost in sort of our, you know, overall priorities with job and family. But I do think that it's important to make sure you stay connected to others in different areas, different interests, um, so that you feel a sense of uh, unity with these, with these gals. What is it about some of these you know, PDAs that have been so helpful to you, and why should women invest in them? I'm nat naturally organized. You know, that has been a thing I struggled with since I was a child. I'm just not naturally inclined that way. I'm a girl who benefits greatly from gentle reminders. <laughs> gentle <laughs> reminders. But I keep the letter to remind me there will always be people who will doubt you, doubt your strengths. Do you deserve the position? Do you deserve the promotion? And you have to believe that you do. And you have to fight for it. So do you advise young women to really go after what they want? I do. I, obviously, you have to be realistic. Uh, you can't go be a urologist. You know, but, uh, but yes, I think you have to persevere, persevere, persevere. If you had to give uh, women a few tips about how to balance their life, what would it be? Because besides the tips that, are, that we're going to show, but, but things that you've done that you do kind of on a daily basis. I think with time, I have now learned um, probably saying no. You know, I think women. <laughs> you said you weren't good at that. <laughs> I think women are. We tend to be our toughest critics, and uh, sometimes uh, I think I should do more. You know, especially yeah. when I when you meet some of the women that you know you're going to have on your show, I'm thinking, oh my God, I should go out and get another degree. You know, maybe bake bread or make my own fabric and then write bigger checks. There's always something to be done, and uh, sometimes I think we get we become a little tough on ourselves with that. And I think it's about thanking ourselves every day for what we have accomplished and saying tomorrow's another day. And your first daughter was born and is a special needs child. How has that challenged you and how has it changed you? When Rebecca was diagnosed, which was about six months after she was born, uh, that was truly the first and I think in many ways the only really bad thing that ever happened to me. But yes, Rebecca did change the way I viewed my profession, change the way I structured my commitment to it, although it didn't lessen my commitment to it. In fact, I was very grateful to the fact, for the fact that I had this career, this profession that I really liked and that was deeply absorbing. Because when I could go to work and really immerse myself in the challenges, first of practicing law and then of being a judge, it was the best distraction from the set of concerns that Rebecca presented and uh, will always present in some ways. Okay, one last quick question. When things are overwhelming, is there anything you tell yourself to get through it? That it's not gonna last. <laughs> and that I am okay, that it doesn't have to be perfect, that there is, it can be good enough and that um, whatever I decide to do is what's best. 
Margot Fontaine was the greatest ballerina of the 20th century. What most people don't know is that in the eyes of her early colleagues, she was considered plump, uppity, stubborn, and technically inferior. In 1964, Margot Fontaine and Rudolf Nureyev received 89 curtain calls at the end of Swan Lake, a record which remains unequaled to this day. Many of life's opportunities unfold only to those who take risks. Imagine what might be waiting for you. Balancing Your Life with Ellen Sussman will be available this fall. Contact KUHT or Needham.